as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you, and I am so glad that you have tuned in to the Bring to Light program. We trust that as we get into God's Word today that the light of Jesus and His Word will flow to you and that you will have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. I think a lot of it is a decision. You know, the Word of God is good from Genesis to Revelation. It is all good. But I do believe God is speaking a word to us today. And my prayer is that you will lean into the Word of God and allow it to minister to you. And then you will not be just a hearer, but you will be a doer of that Word. We're going to continue a long series that we've had what about five years from now? Where will we be? Where will we be in a year? We're going to get into it in just a moment. But before we do, Shantae's got a very special word for you. Listen carefully to that word. News from Bring to Light is our monthly newsletter. My mother shares powerful biblical truths, rays of good news, prayer request, and our itinerary. If you haven't already, ask for your copy. To get your very own copy, call us at area code 865-693-0144 or visit us online at www.bringingtolight.org and be sure to include your best love gift to help our ministry. As always, thank you for your prayers and your financial support to help us lift up the name of Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. I want you to get your Bibles because we're going to be looking at some scripture in just a moment. But when we begin to think, what's it going to be like five years from now? Will I be where I want to be? I know some of you are thinking, well, I hope that's heaven, and I do too. But just in case it isn't, what are you believing for? What are you asking the Lord for? What are your goals and visions? Do you have one for the end of this year? Are you going somewhere? You know, it's like I tell people, if you're running a natural race and there is really nothing set up to keep you on that narrow place, you're going to run to the right, you're going to run over to the left, you're going to run all over the place and never know if you get to the finish line. But if you have a goal and you can see maybe that red tape or yellow tape across the end, you are focused, you're intent, and you are not looking in any other direction except where you need to be going. But I'm concerned that we're looking at only what we're doing today. I've got to get up. I've got to get the family ready. I might have to see about the laundry. I might have to go to my job. I might have particular things I've got to do on the job. In the end of the day, you know, we're getting supper and then we're trying to get ready for bed and then we get up and we do the same thing. But are we taking time to say, Lord, this is what I'm believing you for. This is where I feel, God, that you are directing us. You know, if you're not believing God for something, how are you ever going to receive anything from the Lord? I believe there are so many blessings and so many things He wants to do for us. But we are not asking, we are not energizing, exercising any faith for that. So here we are going down life's way and not experiencing the many things God wants to do. And let me, let me just say this. It's not just about ministering to you and meeting your need, which God is very, very concerned about that. He wants you blessed. But we have people around us everywhere that are lost and undone. There is so much that we need to be doing in God's kingdom to reach the lost. You are called and I am called to go into the world and preach the gospel. But let us begin where we are today. Who around you does not know Jesus Christ? Are you praying and interceding for them? As God would allow you, are you witnessing to them? I want you to begin to believe God. God, I want to see this particular person born again this year. 
God, I'm not, I'm not talking about five years. I'm talking about God right now. Lord, I am believing you and I'm not going to let you go for and call that person's name to the Lord. Be intent in your faith and watch what God will do. He is waiting for some people just to believe Him. I want to share this with you because I feel really led by the Lord to say this. And you may think this is strange. And I know as much as any that the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now that is to the one who is born again. I understand that. But I want to say this to you. I have heard testimony after testimony of people that were on their deathbed and they did not know Jesus Christ as the Lord of their lives. But there were those there praying even when they might be in a coma, when they might be entering in that door of death and those people there would not let them go. I have also read, and you may have read this as well, how that there were those who actually died and was ushered into hell and were ready to go into hell, the very gates of hell with spirits of darkness ready to take them in and there was something that would pull them back up and they would be crying, God have mercy, save my soul. Some had been allowed to live and they were living a born again life. Now let me say this, don't ever give up on your lost loved ones. About the time you think there is no hope and no way for them, it may be the very next step that they're going to call upon Jesus to be their Lord and their Savior. Don't ever quit believing for them. Now, when we begin to think about what are we believing God for, how do I go about doing that? Well, in our last broadcast, we covered a few of them, and I'm going to quickly go back and look at those, but then we want to introduce some of the new ones. But the first one we saw is make a decision. I'm not going to sit here where I am and die. What do we mean by that? Well, we're reminded the lepers. You know, they couldn't go back into the city because of the famine. They couldn't stay where they are. It was going to be surely death. But they made a decision to do what they knew to do. We talked about how that the wind of the Spirit began to impress upon them what they could do and they began to follow that and they went to the enemy's camp. You know the story. The same wind brought confusion to the enemy. They ran away and left all of the goods. There was all the food and the clothing and all of the animals and the lepers began to eat to the full. And they were able to go and share the good news with the others and they too were able to eat. Are we going to stay where we are and die in our oppression and depression? Do we feel like it's hopeless and we're going to quit believing? Child of God, there is no place to quit believing the Lord. Let's don't stay where we are, but let's find the promises of God and let's put our trust in a miracle working God, the God of the impossible. The second thing we saw was in prayer, decide what do I want? What am I believing for? I love the scripture when it talks about, in John 15 and verse 7, Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you're a person of the word of God, you're communing with the Lord. God puts in you wills for his good pleasure. I'm thinking of another scripture here in Philippians 2 and verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Do you have wills and desires? Is there things that's on your heart? I know just recently I was seeking the Lord about the different things in in my personal life and in bringing to light ministries. And, And I'll be honest with you, I had so many dreams and desires and things that I wanted to do. And I really hadn't had time just to pull away and be with the Lord and seek the Lord's face. But when I was able to pull away, and I'm talking about really searching for the Lord, I began to write down some of the things that I felt that God was doing inside of me. Lord, I'd like to do this, and I've been looking at this, God, and what do you think about this? And I began to write it all down. And when I could look at it, it's just like then the Spirit of God began to make order out of what He was saying and doing inside of me. You see, you can have a lot of good ideas. 
You can even say, we need to do this and we need to do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what God is saying for you to do. It may be that he's wanting you just to pray about it. He may be that want to say through you that as you pray and intercede that God can answer that prayer with the individual that he needs to walk in that ministry. But then it may be you. As we will begin to seek the Lord, he will direct our paths. I love the scripture. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your paths. But we have to acknowledge him. God, this is what I believe you are saying. This is the will to inside of me that I am sensing. And God, help me to walk in it according to your will. I think sometimes we're waiting on God to speak from heaven. If I hear the voice of the Lord, I'll do it. Or if I have my burning bush, then I'll move in that direction. To tell you the truth about it, I don't know anybody that's ever had a burning bush. Now, it may be that they had a burning in their heart, but it wasn't a burning bush. But I want you to know, yes, that was something we see in, in the Word of God with Moses, but that doesn't necessarily mean the way God's going to speak to you. Sometimes, it's like I said, it's an unction from within. It's a will to on the inside of us. So let us listen to what God is saying. What do I want? And then begin to make that a matter of prayer. God, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm feeling inside. God, what are you saying in Jesus' name? The third thing, we saw, let's make a petition. The Bible's very clear in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15 that we are asking, we are to ask on the authority of God's Word, His will. It said that when you know He hears you, then whatsoever you desire, when you pray in Mark 11, believe you receive it and you shall have it. We're going to see that in Scripture in just a moment. But then in the fourth thing, as we have seen, ask. We are to ask, listen to John 16, 23, when Jesus said, In that day you shall ask me nothing but anything. You would ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. And then in chapter 5, the importance of agreement. Oh, there's such power in agreement. If there's a husband and wife, if the things that they would agree in God's Word, Jesus said, if you would agree on earth as touching anything, it would be done of the Father. Let us agree. The sixth thing that we want to look at today is believe that you receive. Now, I mentioned that briefly earlier in this message. But Jesus said in Mark 11 and 24, Therefore, I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Believe that you receive it. Now, I know the importance to have this type of belief. It's called having faith in God and faith in His Word. We've seen in Romans 10 and 17 that that kind of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Just because you hear God's promises the first time, that doesn't mean that you automatically have a confidence in your heart. You might have the confidence that God's Word is always true and He does not lie. But at the same time, do we have confidence that that promise is for us concerning that situation? Sometimes faith has to arise in that area. Let me show you why. Because if I'm looking at a problem in my life, that may have been there a while. It may have been a problem for a while. It's cost me a lot of negative feelings. Speak, people are speaking negatively about that situation. And that I hear, that I see. And in all of these things, it set up a belief system in me of that's the way it is. But to change those kinds of things, the Word of God is powerful enough to turn those circumstances and situations around. But I must have in my heart the abundance of God's Word. How do I get that again? By meditating on the Word. And sometimes that's going to take a real focus to do because, again, if I feel badly in a certain part of my body all the time, then it is saying a message to me. It's trying to tell me I'm sick. I'm sick. But what does God's Word say? It says I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. 
I have to choose on purpose to be speaking the healing word rather than allowing the thoughts that come from my body, that comes from other people, that will come from the devil, rather than allow that to become bigger in my heart than the word, I've got to be pulling down those thoughts and imaginations and declaring God's word. So when I ask based on the promises of God, I have to believe that I receive. Sometimes you're going to want to take something tangible and say, Lord, I'm going to believe that this is my healing. And Father God, I have asked you on the authority of your word to quicken this body in the name of Jesus. I know that healing was provided for me 2,000 years ago in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And if you want to read about that, look at Isaiah 53. It's by his stripes that we were healed. How about 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 17. We could go on and on with the healing scriptures. But Father, I'm believing today that I receive it. So reach out with something, an object, and let it be symbolic of what you're believing God for. I've done this many times. Lord, today I believe I receive it. And Lord, it is mine. And God, I'm not going to be denied of what you have promised me, O God, in your word. Lord, I decree today I have received it. You may be thinking, well, Charlotte, it doesn't change the circumstances. I don't feel a bit different. Circumstances don't appear to have changed. But what did it say about faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance, the assurance, the confidence, the knowing that you know, the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things what? Not seen. You may not see the manifestation of what you are believing God for, but that faith and that patience being single-minded will cause it to usher into your life. But until it does, I believe I receive. Listen very carefully. We'd be quick to say that the Lord doesn't lie, would we not? And then I've done this as well. I'd say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you for. And then I'll say, Lord, I believe that I receive it and I thank you for it. And I would begin to imagine myself with the answer to that prayer. I would see myself with it. And the more I would move into thanksgiving and praise, daily now thanking God for that thing. Lord, I thank you for it. And I'd go right through the scripture. Lord, you did not lie. I've asked you, I believe I receive it. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. All at once doing that and just confessing the word, a confidence comes in my heart. Now I know that I have it. I know by faith now that I have it. I don't see it. I may not feel it, but I have a confidence in my heart that I know that I know that I have it. I'm talking to you about a spiritual principle. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about today, and some of you don't have a clue. But listen to what the Word of God says. Believe you receive it. You've got to believe you receive it before you can have it. That again is believing God at His Word. The Lord did not lie. And if He said He would give it to you based on John 16 and 23, then He is not a man that He should lie. You can know that you know that what you have asked for, He will give it to you. And I stand on that in many areas of my life. Well, Charlotte, have you seen all those things come to pass? In the natural, no. But I am not letting go of God. I've seen many things happen and some things I am still holding on to the Lord for. And I've told him, God, if it means believing you until I take my last breath, I will not let you go because, Lord, your word is true. That was the, that's what the Lord's looking for. That brings great joy to his heart when we will stand in faith. So believe you receive it. Now, if I believe I receive it, what's it going to cause me to do? Be thankful. I'm going to begin to thank Him and praise Him. You mean, Charlotte, you're going to thank Him before you have it? Absolutely. God, I'm not going to wait till five years down the road. I'm believing you, Lord, that it's mine today. Isn't that what it said? Now faith is. It's mine today. Now it may manifest tomorrow. It may manifest next week. It may be here. And it may be several years from now. But you know what? There's no place to quit believing the Lord. Scripture is very clear. Anything that's not of faith is sin. So you know what? We might as well learn how to walk the walk of faith because it brings the heart of the Father good pleasure. Now, the seventh thing is, thank the Lord for what you're believing for. And I think we just said that one. But let's read the Scripture. It's in Philippians in chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, be careful... 
for nothing. That means don't be worried, anxious, or troubled about anything. Now, some of you are saying, yeah, how do you keep from doing that? When you get a bad report, you see something that's not right, initially, you're going to feel maybe troubled about it. You're going to maybe feel worried about it. And I'm trusting that we're all growing in the Lord, that we're learning more quickly that we are to give that care to the Lord. Scripture is very clear to cast those cares, those worries over upon the Lord. Why? Because He cares for you. But God does not want you and me to be worried and troubled and anxious about all of these things. And I'll ask you, how many of you being worried and troubled and anxious has caused the answer or to cause that problem to leave? Did you get the answer to your situation because you worried about it? Absolutely not. In fact, it's a negative in your physical body. It will work against you. And this anxiousness, this fear, this worry, it is doubt. It is unbelief. It's not believing God. Do you think your trouble took God by surprise? Do you think he's up on the throne and said, oh, well, this is a big one? I don't think so. God made you and he loved you so much that he gave his best when he gave his gift of his son Jesus to the world. The Bible said, would he not with him freely give you all things? Your problem in trouble. You know, sometimes again, we think, well, I don't want that problem and I don't want that trouble and, and I don't either. But in those times, let us dare to believe God and let's war against that devil that's trying to bring us to that state of fear and worry and anxiousness. Do you know to stay at that place is a sin? We are to reject that fear. We're to reject worry. We're going to say, it has no place in me. My God is a big God and my God is going to see me through. He's going to take me to the other side and I'm going to be stronger in the Lord. I'm going to be more equipped for what God has called me to do in the name of Jesus. So it says, be careful for nothing. Don't be worried about anything, but in everything, everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I want you to notice, when we think about making a request to God, we simply think about asking. And the Bible's clear that if we ask not, we have not. We are to ask. But we have seen today, we have to believe we receive it. And if I believe I receive it, then I'm to enter in into thanksgiving and praise. I am to believe the Lord. And that thanking Him, as I hear myself thank the Lord for what I'm believing for, it's going to bring a peace and a confidence to my heart. In fact, that's what it says in the next part. And when you are thanking the Lord, as you let your request be made known unto God, it says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Where's the battlefield? It's the battlefield of the mind. And that's where the devil is trying to rob you of your faith. Resist him in Jesus' name and believe the Lord. It's been such a joy to minister to you. As always, we're going to get back into some more of these truths on our next broadcast. But lately, I've been receiving many requests from you about counseling. Yes, I do counsel. I had received my master's in counseling because I wanted to be more equipped what goes on with the emotions and the psyche of man based on scriptures. And I love that, but it's like it's opened me up to another area of ministry. So I just wanted to let you know, yes, I am available for that, but we would just ask that you would get our email address. Let us know that's something that you are interested in, and we'll get back with you and let you know the details on that. And I, will, I believe it'll be a real blessing to you. I counsel from the Word of God. And again, God has given me so much insight about why we do the things we do. Why does this make me so angry? Why am I dealing with this unforgiveness? Where's this bitterness coming from? Why is it that my husband and I are just at each other's throats? Why can't we just sit down and get this stuff together? Well, many times it's based on issues out of each one's past. And I feel like when that husband, when that wife can be honest and say, yes, this is what happened, this is what I'm dealing with, that we can find a place that we can come together in the Lord and be healed of all those issues. God 
wants you to have joy in your heart. He wants families to have peace. It may be you've been married before and you're still dealing with issues and you don't want to go into any other relationship based on the things that you've dealt with in the past. Email us and let us know. We'd love that. What a joy it's been to be in God's Word with you today. Now, until next time, may the Lord bless you and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I'm Shante Hawkman. The Bible tells us in John 3 that Nicodemus came to Jesus. Jesus told him in order to be saved, he must be born again. Man is lost and spiritually dead. But by receiving Jesus as Lord, he can become spiritually alive in Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus loves you. You can be born again today by asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Please pray with me. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and were raised from the dead. I call upon your name, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to cleanse me from my sins by your precious blood. I am now a child of God and I am born again. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. If you have prayed this prayer with us, you are now born again. Please let us know and we will send you this CD on salvation. To get your very own copy, call us at area code 865-693-0144 or visit us online at www.bringingtolight.org and be sure to include your best love gift to help our ministry. Again, that's area code 865-693-0144 or online at www.bringingtolight.org. News from Bringing to Light is our monthly newsletter. My mother shares powerful biblical truths, rays of good news, prayer requests, and our itinerary. If you haven't already, ask for your copy. To get your very own copy, call us at area code 865-693-0144 or visit us online at www.bringingtolight.org. And be sure to include your best love gift to help our ministry. As always, thank you for your prayers and your financial support to help us lift up the name of Jesus.